Welcome to Let's Talk to Animals. My name is Shannon Cutts. I'm your friendly neighborhood hostess and delighted to welcome this week, Isabel Alvarez Arada, who is from CoveredInPetHair.com. And this is one of my favorite podcast shows. We were introduced through a mutual friend and I have so enjoyed enjoyed getting to know Isabel, getting to know her story a little bit better and the happy intersection of our pet niche writing interests and the wonderful ways that our animals have come into our lives uh, through lots of interesting, intuitive signs and wonders. And so this is a little bit, just a little bit of a tweak in our regularly scheduled bi-weekly programming because normally I'm interviewing fellow animal intuitives or energy workers or holistic veterinarians. And yet I posit that everyone has an animal intuitive inside of them. And (laughs) as Isabel and I have been getting to know each other, I have discovered her inner intuitive and have really been enjoying that. And so I feel like she's got some wonderful stories to share about how animal communication has shaped and deepened her relationships with her own animal family, and also about all the other options that pet parents have for taking the best care of our animal friends, for taking taking some of the, the burden of choosing from the, the hundreds of thousands of different options out there for, well, well, what do I need in this situation? Or what would be the best kind of nutrition or the best way to start up a play date or the best way to find natural solutions for pet discomfort or pet injury or illness. And she's taken so much of the workload away from us in choosing and kind of vetting these options and sharing a great place to start. And so Isabel, welcome. So excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to see Miss Petal again. Hi, Miss Petal. I know Miss Petal is being unusually quiet. Uh, those of you who've been following along with season four of Let's Talk to Animals, you probably remember that I lost my precious soul bird Pearl back in January. He had been with me for 24 years solid and Miss Petal is his new body. He's Mm -hmm. come back as what he was always searching for in his life was a ladybird, and he's come back as a ladybird. And if you (laughs) want to learn more about that story, you can listen back a couple episodes when I share how that how that unfolded. But I'm so delighted to have her here as my new co-hostess. Oh, she's the Uh, let's talk to animals. Well, she's found a wonderful new toy in mummy's necklace. Um, (laughs) She's already done a great job remodeling mummy's headband. Mm -hmm. And now she's gone to work on my necklace. So my personal style coordinator. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Isabel, I kind of, I kind of gave you a little preview before I hit record that the first thing I always love to invite our guests here on the show to do is to share a little bit about your personal story. You know, so many of our listeners and our viewers are inspired to do something to make animals' lives better. And that can unfold in so many different ways. And you have had a wonderful, a wonderfully varied uh, evolution and journey in all some of the different ways that you've impacted animals' lives. You definitely had to do what I would imagine was a rather difficult pivot when COVID hit us. And Mm -hmm. now here you are on Pet Life Radio, no less, one of the most recommended shows in the nation and the MC this year, right? Earlier this year in my own home state of Texas of the National Pet Convention. Is that correct? The Texas Pet Sitters Conference. The Texas Pet Sitters Conference. And so, Mm -hmm. so even though you've, you've kind of had to make a pivot, it feels like things are even brighter perhaps now. So I would just love, rather than attempt to tell your story, I would love to invite (laughs) you to do that. Nobody's tuning in to listen to me talk. So so just share a little bit about your background, who you are, where you're from, your animal family and your passion for pets. Thank you so much again for having me. I love everything to do with animal communication. I have not always been a believer, but I've had moments in my life that confirmed it for me. And I've been in the pet industry for 15 years now uh, for 
the first 12 and a half years, 12 plus years, I was uh, running a professional pet sitting, dog walking business in the DC area, Northern Virginia, for those that are familiar. And COVID hit uh, in 2020 and I had, you know, a staff of 20. We had uh, over uh, 500 active clients. We had served 100,000 pet sits in 12 years. I mean, we were a pretty substantial operation and I was living in El Paso, but my service area, like I said, was in the DC area. And I said, different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had been running it remotely for five years because I married into the military Mm. and we had to move. So I made it so that I could run the business remotely. I had amazing staff, amazing managers and amazing clients. And it was all running so smoothly until it was not. And I always joke that I had just redesigned our website for 2020. I had just gotten new scheduling software that was going to just take us to the next level. And then the pandemic hit. And it was shocking, like it was for everybody. Um, But it made me, it forced me into a corner because I couldn't run a business remotely without clients, with shutdowns, with most of my staff was in the high risk group because I loved hiring empty nesters and retirees. So it put like just this huge wrench in the whole plan and the whole operation. So I shut down and I had clients, you know, sending us money just to keep us afloat a few months. And like, I, even then with all that generosity and all that loyalty, it was not enough. So yes, it was a huge, um, pivot. At first, I wasn't even sure what I was going to do because I just had my second baby. She was a month old when the pandemic hit. And I was obviously otherwise uh, engaged. I was breastfeeding constantly. And anybody who's done that is it's a full time job. And I had at the time I had three older dogs. I had a toddler. My husband's in the military. So even though there was a pandemic, he was still traveling for work. So it was just a lot. And I was like, well, I don't have to make any decisions right now. But intuitively, I felt like I was going to have to do something in the pet industry because I had already laid down all of these, all of these roots here in the pet industry. I knew so many people. I loved the industry. I loved the people. I love pet lovers because that's my people, right? Like in the, in the, when I was at the Texas pet sitters conference, I said, these are my people. This is the mothership. Because when you, when you're, with like-minded folks, you just feel at home. So I just, I said, am I really going to throw away 12 plus years in an industry just because that plan didn't work out? Yeah. So I was watching TV one day. Uh, I was watching a late night TV show and I said, it would be so fun to do something like this where we play games, have drinks, make it more casual, more fun in the pet industry. And like, it just kind of was like one of those light bulb moments. And I'm like, oh, interesting. So I shared the idea with a friend of mine who's an animal communicator, Tim Link, who has a show Mm -hmm. on Pet Life Radio. He's been on Let's Talk to Animals too. I love him. Yes, he's wonderful. So he's actually my first foray into animal communication was with Tim. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. So I told him about the show and I I said, do you think that there's like a market for this? Do you think people would want it? And he said to me, I am going to have a meeting with Mark Winter from Pet Life Radio next week. Coincidentally, I'll I'll run it by him, see what he thinks. And Mark was interested. So we had a conversation and I kind of had to sell it a little bit, right? I had to be like, he has Pet Life Radio 70 shows. And they're all unique to Pet Life Radio. They have to start on Pet Life Radio. He doesn't like adopt shows that already exist. He's very specific about what he wants, who he, you know, includes in his his family of shows. And he was like, he's like, describe your vision for the show to me. And I'm like, well, we get to know them socially. He's like, we do that. Um, We get to know their passions, you know, the people, the players in the pet industry. Yeah, we do that. And I said, it's boozy. And he said, okay, we don't do that yet. So let's have, you know, the, the fact that I'm having a drink with, friends like it was a happy hour kind of gave it a new spin and he was interested and we do the playing games we do a drinking game you know like if you're an audience member you can take a a swig of whatever you're enjoying when you hear a certain word so it's like just like it's supposed to be fun 
entertaining but also educational because we talk pets and we talked to some of the best i talked to some of the best and the best like you Mm -hmm. uh in the industry Mm -hmm. because i want to showcase people's talents i want to like you said provide resources to pet parents who otherwise wouldn't find these people because there's such a there's so much information out there And it can be just overwhelming. And we tend to, typically we tend to look for these resources when we're already, there's either a crisis brewing or we're full on in it. 1000%. Absolutely right. That is something that I speak about a lot on the show is don't wait, you know, start noticing things, be proactive um, because there are so many resources. And it's so nice to know that the industry is ever growing, ever changing and we are, it's actually a small world because a lot of us know, like you just, I just said Tim mm-hmm. Ling and you know exactly. I what just, I thought that was the closest. I just, I didn't even realize that you were connected that way. And just before we got on, I went to make sure that I had your website correct. So I wouldn't mangle it like I do sometimes. And there was his picture. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Yep. It is a really small world. And so it many is. of us do wear multiple hats and we have multiple passions. Exactly. Like you and I share writing and we share mm-hmm. podcasting and we have friends probably in both fields that we don't even know that we share in common yet. Absolutely. And it's so nice because after the pandemic hit and I still didn't have a show, didn't have anything. I started writing for publications in uh, South Carolina and it was because of a pet friend, pet industry friend who saw what I was going through, saw that I was closing my business and said, Hey, do you want to make some extra money? Like they're looking for writers. And to this day, I'm still writing for these publications. I've taken on more writing because of that ref, ref, you know, that reference that she gave me. So really like, there's just so much love and so much support in the industry that after enjoying that for 12 plus years, I just didn't want to leave it. And even though I had no idea what was coming next, Luckily, the show's been great and I continue to write. And now I actually write um, for pet businesses. I blog for them. So I do content creation. Mm -hmm. I do copy editing. I do so much now still in the pet industry for people that I've known in completely different capacities. But now I'm working with them as as their writer. So it's it's really cool. It makes me feel like one of my first really intensive intuitive trainings was with Byron Katie, who is famous for the work. And she shared with us on day one of this very intensive nine day retreat that I went on, that this is a friendly universe. And this was many, many, many years ago. And at the time I had no idea that I could, I could hear the animals and I could speak with them. I had no, no real clue that I had an intuitive an inner guidance system really of any kind. Everything felt like, you know, flukes or coincidences or serendipity, (laughs) or thank God somebody bailed me out right at the last minute. I was like one cliffhanger away from my next cliffhanger. And that's what my life felt like. And when she said, this was a friendly universe, I thought to myself, well, that's really interesting. And I trust that she knows her stuff, but why doesn't it feel like that to me? But that kind of was a wake up call for me. And as I'm listening to your story, I know there's so many people who are still struggling through the aftermath of having to make major shifts in their lives of having, I mean, and and many, many pet lovers who have actually adopted additional animals, maybe (laughs) surprises that they weren't even expecting because of pivots that other families had to make and they could no longer care for their animals. And so we're all still kind of working our way through. And this feels like a particularly um, appropriate moment to anchor back to that wisdom. Cause I hear so much of that, you know, there's this simple love and care, this simple desire when we receive something good or some help that we really need and wanting to turn around and share it in it opens our eyes to what's going on in the lives of those around us. And I feel like the animals are instrumental in that they are the architects of unconditional love and compassion for others. And when we, that's, this is why I, I mean, it doesn't really matter what niche you're in. I feel like these, our community is the best community. And although let's talk to animals started and continues to be about de-wooing and demystifying animal intuition as something that we all share, it, it reaches out it has so many brand, like if that's kind of the root that we all share this inner intuition, we all share these vibes, these hunches, these aha moments, these gut instincts, these Mm -hmm. 
um, like you said, it was kind of a, hmm, a boozy pet show. Well, that's very interesting, you know, right. well, you know, and it just is like, you don't really know where that idea exactly came from. Like, where did it, you know, where did exactly did it come from? It came from some place you trusted that you don't necessarily have a yes. name for. So it's awake Agreed. and active in all of us. And any of us who have gone through the, any kind of a pivot situation, we, we started, it's like, we can find our people and others. Maybe they don't do exactly what we do, but their stories have certain, there's certain little key hallmarks, little signposts along the way where we go, yep, you're doing the thing too. Yes, <laughs> you're exactly. learning this thing too, and we're doing it together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so. actually funny because even animal communication was something that I never, I mean, it, it just didn't, it yeah. didn't occur to me until yeah. one day when I was saying goodbye to my first love dog, she was mm -hmm. the first dog I adopted as almost an adult. I was 17. Mm -hmm. I told my mom I had to have a dog. My mom, single mom, her kids were, you know, getting close to college. She was like, okay, let's get a dog. And the last time I said goodbye to her, she was perfectly healthy. She was, she was a senior, but she, there was, I was in the car by myself with her. She was going to boarding. We were going on a cruise. And I remember being like, I'll see you soon. And I don't know if it was her intuition, her speaking to me, my intuition. I don't know what it was, but I heard this is the last time we're going to see each other. Yeah. And it was. And I remember just crying, you know, yeah. my being recognized that that was true and that it was accurate intellectually. I was like, what just happened? But I immediately started crying. I went back into my house. My uncle was there. He was driving us to the port and everybody was like, why are you crying? I'm like ready, picture me ready to go on a cruise with a hat, yeah. with my sundress and I'm crying. And they're looking at me like, you are insane. What is happening? And I said, Bachi just said, I'm never going to see her again. And I believed it. And of course, part of me didn't believe it. So I didn't dwell on it, but she was right. We never saw each other again. Three, three months yeah. later, four months later, she was gone. You know, a, a health crisis that was not foreseen that nobody saw coming. And we thought she was a little dog. She could have lived to 15 easy. She was only 12 and otherwise healthy yeah. and she, she was gone. And so there was a, an intuition there that I always have known is there and that I've sometimes listened to. And sometimes my body doesn't let me ignore it. Like yeah. that moment where yeah. my feelings knew that it was true. Yeah. And it's also complicated because sometimes that first breakthrough conversation is news that we'd rather not know. Right. And so it's doubly easy to err mm -hmm. on the side of disbelief and just yes. say, well, I can't verify it. I can't prove it. And I don't like what, what I just right. thought. So I think I'm exactly. just going to, you know, sideline that and, and that's the hallmark of, of true intuition is when it stays with you and you can't, you can't, you can't talk yourself out of what you experienced. Right. And in fact, that reminds me of the story that you were telling me last week when we recorded my episode on, on covered in pet hair. And you were sharing a little bit about how you met Van Gogh, your yes. current soul cat. And I would love if you would share that story with our listeners. Yes, I would love to. This just happened six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was at the first week of January, we scheduled it. We celebrated his life. It was a beautiful goodbye. I think that it was one of those, the as positive as it possibly can be yeah. under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I was okay. I, I had mourned his loss for a long time before he left. Mm -hmm. um, so I was okay. And I went to get my hair done and the stylist had adopted a cat and it wasn't getting along with her cat. And she was like, do you want a cat? And I said, no, I can't have a cat. <laughs> Right. Of course not. Of course. I not. have an asthmatic kid. I have allergies to cats. I just lost my soul dog. I've lost three dogs in the past two years. Kira. I don't, I don't know if she wants a dog. She's my only remaining dog. She's 12. Do I really want to bring a kitten or 
cat to this poor dog. So I'm thinking all the reasons why I can't have a cat. Why you can't? But my have husband's it. like, yeah. My husband's ready to get the cat. My husband's like, there's a cat there. Can I come visit? So he literally comes from work to see the cat. And I'm like, we're not having a cat. We're not getting a cat. She's trying to introduce this cat to one of her coworkers' families. It's all, it doesn't work out. So she still has this cat weeks later. And she keeps telling me about this cat. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not ready for a cat. But I did offer to take care of the cat while she was on vacation. I was like, okay, for 10 days, we can kind of do a trial. I'll bring him here. But she decided she was going to try harder with the cat and her cat to get along. So she didn't want to take him from the house and reintroduce. So she didn't ask me to pet sit for her. And I thought nothing of it. But I was preparing to take care of that cat, right, as just as a temporary situation. And I started kind of getting comfortable with the idea of having a cat. And I went to the Texas Pet Sitters Conference. And at Pet Sitters Conferences, you talk about everything, you know, business, recruiting, but you also talk about the pets. So we had a conversation about cats and enrichment for cats and how much fun cats are. And I went to Super Zoo in August and I saw all these cool cat products now that we have that are just like there's so much cool stuff so we're talking about like the cool products you can get now and I'm just getting kind of excited about the cat like the possibility mm -hmm. of having a cat something put the idea of a Russian blue in my head I don't know I still don't know where that came from so the day the conference ends I start going on pet finder and I'm looking for a Russian blue like I have no idea what I'm doing why am I doing this but I'm mm -hmm. still doing I love it. that I love it <laughs> The whole time, I'm like, really, Isabel, what are you doing? And so I get back on a Monday from Dallas, where the Texas Pet Sitters Conference was held. My husband is leaving for an extended period of time the next morning. We seriously have like 12 hours together. And I say, I'm getting a cat. And I don't want you to be part of it. I don't want you to be there. I don't want the kids to be there. I'm getting a cat. And so I'm looking online and I find a Russian blue who's actually older. And I, I think his name was Bradley. And I contact the rescue here, uh, the Las Cruces. Um, it's the cats me Las Cruces. And they tell me he's bonded to another cat. And I really just wanted one cat. I want one dog and one cat. That's all I have the bandwidth for. Right. At this point, I really don't even think I have the bandwidth for a second pet, but I'm going with it. So they tell me he's bonded. I'm, I'm not going to separate them. They're not going to separate them. And I'm not really interested in taking two cats. So I keep looking on their same website and I find Van. And he's four months old. He's a Russian blue. And he was just taken from the uh, shelter like days before, four days before. Mm. And so at this point, I'm like, he's beautiful. He's a, a kitten. So like kittens move quicker. So I, I'm just like the sense of urgency is just taking over me at this point. And so mm -hmm. I tell the rescuer on text all about my family. I, I'm completely transparent because if they don't think we're a good match, I want them to make that determination. I respect and I I love all of the rescue workers out there. And I if they say no, it's no. And I'm not going to argue with it. So she was still like, yeah, I think you should meet him. And he was in re uh, he was in foster. So I made an appointment to go to their adoption center and he would come over from his foster for our meeting. Wow. She, I get there. I'm I'm there like the second they open. They open at two o'clock. I'm there at like 159 and I'm ready with my carrier and I'm just, I, I'm getting a cat. I had already bought litter boxes. I, this was You're ready. done. Yeah. This was done. This was happening. And I walk into, you know, the, the kennel where he's, he is there with his sister and I had told her, I really only want one cat. And she said, they're not bonded. They're like four months old. They're not bonded. They're fine. But I come in and he like sees me. I walk into, you know, those kennels that they have, like they're pretty big. Yeah. You can walk into them. Yeah. And I walk in and he wakes up and he kind of comes to me, super curious, purring, like we're like best friends. His sister doesn't even look at me. She's sleeping. Yeah. She's napping. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. That's prime nap time. She's like not interested. And he comes and he says, hi. He's like purring, getting in my face. And then he goes back and he starts kissing his sister. And I'm like, oh no. I mean, I can't take two cats. I really don't want to take more than I can handle. And I really wanted the cat to bond with Kira because she was lonely mm -hmm. after losing all the pets. And I was scared that if I brought two pets that they would bond to each other, two cats, yeah. would they would bond to each other and Kira would feel, feel left out. 
So I was really committed to one cat. And I said to Van Gogh, I said, listen, I see you love your sister, but I can only take one of you. And I want to take you home. And I said this out loud, like a crazy person, right? Fantastic. Like Fantastic. I said it out loud. I'm talking to him. Like I'm talking on the phone with, you know, with Comcast. Like I can right. only take one of you and I want you and you're more than welcome to be part of our family, but I can't bring your sister. And that's okay. If you don't want that. He jumped in the carrier. He literally okay, well, there came you go. down and walked into the carrier and I was like, okay. And so I think he was, and then he gave her kisses while I gave, while I fill out the information, they were just snuggled and giving kisses. He's a very affectionate cat. So he was just loving on his sister and maybe he was saying goodbye. I don't know. But to me, he was 100% comfortable with just going on his own. And, and that's, I needed that because I felt really guilty leaving her behind. Um, great, great. Gratefully, I'm very grateful that this organization is a super organization. She's going to find an awesome home. They will keep her as long as it, they need to to keep her. She's in foster, so she's happy. So hopefully, you know, it's not like I was leaving her at a kill shelter. Right. Totally right. different. I probably would not have been able to walk right. away without her under those circumstances. But Van Gogh got home. He was the only pet I've ever gotten on my own accord, which is really big for me because I'm a 42 year old woman and I've always gotten pets for other people. My mom, Bachi, the dog that my mom and I got, mm -hmm. I got it because it looked like my mom's dog from her childhood. She was like, this mm -hmm. looks just like Mini," And I was like, okay, that's the okay. one we're going to get. Titan, I didn't choose him. My ex chose him. He found him online. I just wanted a dog. I didn't care what he looked like. But of course, he had to look like a manly big dog. So my ex chose Titan, uh, which was not a, he was not a manly big dog at all. He was a big dog, but he was the sweetest, most sensitive soul you've ever met in your life. He and I bonded instantly. So he was totally my dog, even though my ex chose him. Uh -huh. Two of these dogs that, that I have, that I have had for the past five years came with my husband it was a package deal so like i had no say in that and then the other dog i had was chosen by titan we went to an adoption event and he went straight to her and would not leave her side and i had no choice so van gogh is the first animal that I I've you're the only one life. in your family that's never had a say in your own pet exactly <laughs> and i i'm the primary caregiver to all these animals but mm -hmm. i've never had a say so i didn't want to take the kids like some people might say like why wouldn't you take her three-year-old and five-year-old to meet the pet because I've been in the industry for 15 years I know a lot more about pets than they do their input uh -huh. does not matter like they don't have the experience they don't have the know-how they don't know what they're looking for and honestly I know that I'm always going to make the best decision for my children mm -hmm. and for my pets mm -hmm. so I didn't need them there and my husband my husband God love him. He is such a talker. He will talk and talk and get excited and meet everybody. And then I, I'm just all over the place. So I needed it to be my decision, my heart, the pet's heart, looking at each mm -hmm. other, knowing it's the right thing. And I, and I don't know, I just needed that. And it was the greatest intro. We have been making out, not my husband and I, Van Gogh and I yeah. ever since. Because I like grab him. He like loves to be loved. My kids adore him. He is so comfortable with strangers, with the craziness in my home. He came to our house and 10 days later, we went on vacation to Phoenix. He was in a car. He was on a harness. He was in a backpack. He and Amazing. My yeah, he and my dog are like loving on each other. She, he like licks her like our old dog used to do. He cleans mm. her face just like one of our older, like that has passed, mm. those dogs did. So I, it's just like the most perfect situation. And I feel that it was me following that kind of like push. It was like gravitational almost that like I had to do this. And of course, if you, like you said, the the universe is friendly. Like the universe led me to exactly the right pet, to exactly the right time, to exactly the right situation. And I cannot tell you how much joy this animal has brought into this house. And we've it's amazing because it feels like, you know, part of part of my own learning curve and examining this phrase, you know, this is a friendly universe, is is having to ask myself, am I willing to be befriended? Am I even mm -hmm. open to that? And I feel like Van Gogh has come into your life because there was that basic willingness and that recognition, you know, I need some support. Yes. I have a joyful life. Yes. I have a joyful family. Yes. It's a joy to serve others, but 
there's nothing wrong with asking what about me. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, there's everything right about this source of inner brave and inner strength to say, I feel like I just need somebody of my own, somebody who's coming into my life to support me, to validate for me, to lead me, to teach me. You're a leader, you're a teacher for so many others. And yet, you know, where's my opportunity to be vulnerable, to be imperfect, to be sad, to be tired, to, to be seen and heard and accepted and loved just for me, not for any of those roles, not for any of the hats that mm -hmm. I wear. And, you know, for, for our listeners, if, as you're listening to Isabel tell this story, I would, I, I really want to encourage you to ponder, you know, where are you perhaps withholding befriending from yourself? Where are you perhaps putting up a wall that no longer needs to be there? And also con contemplating the animals who have helped to open your heart. Maybe they're with you now, maybe they're in spirit, considering how your own intuition was introducing itself to you through yeah. the serendipity, through the instinctual responses that led you and your animal souls, soul paths to cross. You know, there's yeah. always a soul contract in place. And so many times, you know, our animals enter our lives and they know things about us. They know things about life and how to live it that we don't know, but we can sense. And it's that openness to being befriended, to being vulnerable, to letting down our guard, to saying, I, I don't, I don't know what it right. is that's missing from my life or why it is that I feel so afraid or so anxious or so lonely all the time. I can look around empirically, rationally, I can say I have so much when others mm -hmm. have so little. And so instead of feeling guilty or feeling ashamed or feeling angry or just walling it off and shutting it out, just recognizing that this is coming up for a reason. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. deepening process. So one thing that COVID did to all of us that practically none of us liked is gave us a lot of face time with ourselves, right? Not right. selfie time, not social time, but serious, <laughs> serious one-on-one -on -one personal self time. And it's bringing up a lot for a lot of people. And so many, it's like up ending all of the areas where we felt like we had our kind of had our self-confidence covered. We were on our game. We were in yes. our flow. We were adulting like pros, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oof. and, you know, just leave it to a four month. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be open to it from any source, it's probably going to be a four month old kitten or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a 10 week old parrot or an eight week old puppy. You know, that's probably where our comfort yes. zone is going to lead us. And so just notice, you know, if you've got something brewing in your life right now, or maybe you have this craving for something or someone a little different, and you're saying to yourself, oh no, oh no, notice how you follow it anyway. Yep. And as you continue to follow it anyway, notice how it may be leading you to just the the, the resolution or the um, solution to whatever that emptiness yes. is asking you to open to. It's just, um, just see, uh, in fact, I would even encourage you, encourage you to rewind, listen to Isabel's story again, and kind of consider where those moments were that you knew. I always get so fascinated by out of all the animals and all the people on this planet right now, how is it that, that our paths intersect so deliberately exactly. with exactly the right animal for us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does mm -hmm. that happen? And how do we know? So it's not about having all the answers. It's about beginning to ask these very interesting questions. Yes. It's funny because I, when I tightened my soul dog, who I lost in January, there were four families trying to adopt him that weekend that we went mm -hmm. to see him. But it was because of my connection with him that was so obvious, it was tangible to the rescuers, to the organization that they chose us. Were we, I was 27 years old. What could, could an empty nester have given him a better life? Maybe, but that connection was undeniable. And I really thought, intellectually after Titan was gone that I could live without a Titan figure in my life. I really thought, and yeah. I made it a whole like 
60 days, not even. Yeah. So we our thought, minds come up with these wonderful theories. <laughs> at 60 days, I was ready to, to, to find that soul connection again, because to me, I don't know that I can live without it. I've had that confidant, that right-hand man in Titan for 15 years and to go without it was not possible for me because I, it, it improves my life so much. It so fills much. that emptiness so beautifully that I will make that work because the priority is that feeling that I get, that support mm -hmm. that I get, the joy that I get. Sure is, I mean, would it be more practical and better for my budget to not have another pet? <laughs> Probably. <Of course>. Always. <laughs> it feels to me like perhaps you could live without that. You you could manage, but why would you exactly. want to? Exactly. I made it almost 60 days. I mean, so which is me, admirable, truly. That is admirable. I mean, a lot of people, they grieve so much when they lose their pet that they can't imagine connecting again on that level because they don't want to hurt again. Yeah. To me, yeah. it's, I, I just saw this quote, which is perfect for my show about the loss that we feel when our pets die. And it's like something along the lines of, you don't worry about the hangover when you're at the party. And Isn't like having, is it right? Having the pet is so joyful, so much fun that it's so worth it. Despite the inevitable grief that we're going to feel that inevitable emptiness and that in inevitable loss and sometimes trauma that comes with our losses. But to me, it's like, sign me up for all of that because I get so much joy before all that. You know, it's that it just speaks to my heart because you and I had profound losses at a, almost the same time. And yes. I made all the plans to do it better this time. You know, when I mm. lost my last parrot, I was, I was hysterical. I was screaming. I'm sure the neighbors were calling the police because I was so loud and I was just so upset. And I was just sure that I was going to do it better with Pearl. And it turned out it was, he died in the same exact way. I had the oh. same exact response. The very same day that he passed, I was already on the phone, despite myself looking for, uh, looking for him again, looking for, mm -hmm. looking for mm -hmm. that connection. Right. And the only thing that was different was that this time around, having had personal experience communicating with animals, I had a lot more trust that because my intention was to keep going, because I knew that's what Pearl would want for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that so strongly. I had a lot more trust that the friendly universe would step in to help guide me. And I'm really curious because now you shared your story with Titan and the connection that you felt you shared the story of Van Gogh and the connection that you felt. If you feel like in, in many ways, it was the animal choosing you yes. as well. Yes. yes. That's so what Titan I'm 100%. feeling listening to you, but I wanted yes. to see if you were experiencing that. Yes. Titan 100% chose me. It's funny because I remember us being interviewed by a young guy at the adoption. It was Hart H A R T in Virginia. They're really oh, wow. big. They did, they did um like their adoptions at a Petco or PetSmart, and we mm -hmm. were there so early because I that's me. Like I want something. Yeah. I want something. I want it now. I wanted it yesterday. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we get there early. We're actually mm -hmm. helping uh, my ex and I are helping them like unload crates and like how can we help wow. you? Let's volunteer. They have no idea why we're there. We said we were here to see some pets, but we didn't like mention who it was. And then once they're set up, we're like, oh yeah, we have an appointment to see Titan. And like, we're, the guy's talking to us. I'm sitting on the floor. Titan's like melting in my lap. Like, and the guy looks and says, wow, he really loves you. <sighs> Three minutes into us meeting. And I was like, oh, okay. And it didn't really say anything to me because I just, just, I, he was a puppy and puppies fall asleep in my lap. And that's just what happens, right? Like they're not that hard to please or impress. So I didn't think anything of it. I kind of was like, yeah, pets, dogs love me. This was before I was in the industry. If it wasn't for Titan, I wouldn't be in the industry. Is but, um, that interesting? Yes, 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 yes. But when they call, we had to leave Titan. We couldn't take him with us because there were other families that had appointments to see him too. Oh, wow. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is walk away from that dog because I didn't know if I would ever see him again. 
And that night at like 10 p.m., they called when there were still landlines. It was a Saturday night. We were out. And they called and left a message saying, like, we've chosen you for Titan. And I bawled so happy. Yeah. I went two hours to get him the next day. You know, it was he was mine from the second we met. And he he made it clear to everybody in that organization that I was his 100 percent. And I mean, Van Gogh got into my carrier. Like, I, I mean, mean, how much? And we all know how much cats love carriers in general, right? Like, they're just chomping at the bit the moment we pull one out, right? Exactly. <laughs> he literally was like, What's this? Am I going to be in here? Oh, let me go in here. And he was yeah. like, kissing me and loving me. And I'm, you know what? Yeah. He's, he's, he's kind of a lover. So maybe he does that to everybody. But like, the fact that I was like, I can only take you and it's completely up to you. Cause I'm really big on letting pets tell me if I'm on the right track. I've always done that. I'm like that with my children too. So I was like, if you don't want this, that's cool. I mean, I'll be sad, but there, like, there's like a hundred cats in that place. Like, right. But he made it very clear that he was agreeing that we were meant to be together, and that was I need that from them. I I do. I don't want. I don't want to force things. Forcing things just does not work for me. It doesn't come naturally to me. I don't pretend. I don't force. Like I'm very like if it's meant to be, let it be. So both of those definitely chose me and I feel that that sets us up for that connection because it's a mutual consent to share our, our journeys with each other. You know, it's so interesting because when you and I first met, you, you know, you told me you didn't think that you had the ability and your husband is, is very intuitive. The more I get to know you, the more I, I feel like you, you know, the only thing that's missing as we talked about on your show and, and for those of you who are listening to this episode, you'll want to go over to coveredinpethair.com and listen to our episode together because it's fabulous. We had such a great conversation. Yes. And the only thing that's really missing is just, you know, to be able to carve out the time to pay right. a little bit more attention to it. Last night I, I taught a class, uh, a new class of animal communication students, and we were talking about just the few, the handful of, of, of traits or characteristics that we simply must have in place before we begin any kind of an intuitive journey. And one, one is, is this feeling of mutual equality, mm. what I sometimes call respect, but it's the equality. It's the recognition that this other being is, is equal in, in the sense of not different. Right. And has the capacity. If only we will just stretch a little bit outside of what we've learned from interacting with other homo sapiens, if we can stretch a little bit further than that, that, that they absolutely have the capacity, not only to tell us what they want and need, but to take proactive action for what they want and need yes. and to show yes. us that and to communicate. And I, I told my students last night, I said, let me tell you, once your animals figure out that you can hear them, <laughs> Life is about to get very interesting in your family. So buckle up, honey. It's very interesting to watch the response. I mean, imagine if you've spent, I've lived in, in other countries where I did not understand the language and this feeling when you've been holding your breath for a month or six weeks or three months, because you really can't ever fully express yourself. You can't really communicate with anybody beyond, you know, Banos, mm -hmm. Banos, por favor, Banos, you know, <laughs> mucho Banos, you know, and you're just like trying everything. And then you meet somebody who understands. Right. And that this is what our animals feel like. So sometimes it can feel like the floodgates open. And I feel like all along you have had these hallmark experiences and yet there's always been a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. things that break through are the big things. Mm -hmm. mm, you know, and there's lots and lots of little things there that are yet to be discovered. And I feel like sometimes this is why we get a long time. Most of us, we get a pretty good chunk of time here because we don't have time for every lesson, everything that we, you know, when we made our soul contract bucket list before we yeah. came down to earth and became embodied or however you want to look at that for our incarnation, it's like, we didn't sign up to do all of those things all at once because it's just right. not possible. These conversations are so rich and so wonderful and they're very tremendously rewarding for me to have. Mm -hmm. um, even, even though I have discovered a wonderful, wonderful company of my people through this work, 
Sometimes it can feel like me talking to me all day long. So it's really amazing to have you on the show and to introduce the amazing work that you do to the Let's Talk to Animals listening and watching audience. So I'd love for you to share a little bit more about how Covered in Pet Hair serves pet parents, some of the amazing resources that our listeners can make use of and a way to reach out to you if anyone would like to work with you in pet niche writing, or if they would like to ask you questions about the different show topics or suggest a show topic or anything else. They just want to connect with you because they love, they love Russian blue cats. Who knows? We (laughs) want to make sure they can find you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. So um, I'm covered in pet hair on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, covered in pet hair. And I interview the best of the best in the industry. I, it's hard for me to really say what I talk about. I specialize in dogs and cats. So pretty much any topic that applies to dogs and or cats is something that I cover on my show. I've I ask the most interesting people. I ask people that that I know are making a difference to be on my show. I cover topics that like dog culture in dog training in 2023 was my latest episode with one of the most educated dog trainers out there. And I wouldn't have known her or known about her except for through my community of dog trainers that I've always followed. Um, I am not only finding the biggest names because the biggest names are just kind of like the tip of the iceberg in the industry. Uh I go to super zoo to find new people entering the industry so that I can kind of tell their story too. So I'm trying to really stay on top of trends. I really try to stay on top of what I see as common Uh conflicts that people are having within their homes and their pets or difficulties that they're encountering separation anxiety Mm -hmm. was something that was kind of being talked about a lot so in i think it was season two i interviewed melena di martini who is one of the experts in separation anxiety fantastic you know muzzling muzzling is so important for dog owners and it has such a terrible kind of stigma so i interviewed michael shikashio who is a dog trainer who specializes in aggression and reactivity Mm -hmm. and i've talked about anxiety in dogs i've talked about herbs for cats which we think just catnip and it's that's it Mm -hmm. i i recently interviewed a homeopathic um practitioner who specializes in pets so it's really just there's so much out there and i try to bring what I think is going to be most practical and most relevant to the majority of pet parents, your average pet parent. I'm not speaking to the pet parent that knows it all, that has, you know, that feeds raw perfectly, that has everything figured out because that's not even me. And I've been in the industry for 15 years, right? <laughs> it certainly isn't me. So I'm not speaking to the perfect parent, pet parent. I'm I'm speaking to those of us that all just want to make take small steps to improve our connection, our bond with our pets, who want to improve the life of their pet, their longevity, the quality of their life. If they're seniors, I have a thing for senior pets. So I always, I just want to make it so that everybody has just, just a little bit more, an idea that might make things better, an idea that might lead them to a solution that they're looking for. I also mm-hmm. want to entertain and have fun and get to know people on a more personal level because for especially ve- veterinarians, like we just think of veterinarians as doctors that we have to go to when something is wrong, but there's a person there and there's a story there. And I like yes. to highlight all that makes these impressive people tick, not just their professional resume and their the curriculum they've accomplished, but also like why they're here, what makes them tick, what their pets are like, like, you know, where yes. they started. So I just think it's so important for all of us to have like a place to share our story. And I like to make it fun. I mean, there are po- pet podcasts all over the place, but I try to make it fun and and include mm-hmm. some learning there just so that people can take a little lesson with them after like, you know, vegging out or like taking a walk with their pet and listening to some fun trivia. Absolutely. And especially, I mean, it's just brilliant. Just the way that your inspiration came through at, and the timing of it, just at a moment when we were going to feel probably most of us more isolated from each other than at any other time that we've been on this planet. And here you come with this brilliant idea for an online 
happy hour. Like exactly. the thing that we most craving that we suddenly realize that we can't, yes. we literally can't live without this. It's, you know, and yes. I love that you, you also have a little like here in Houston over the past several years, we've had kind of this um, upsurge of the specialty cocktail yes. and the, the prohibition air. Apparently mm-hmm. that was when we got mm-hmm. really like highbrow about our cocktails and <laughs> so I love that there you can even if you if you love to you know grow your own herbs or mm-hmm. create your own beverages I love on your YouTube channel that you even have recipes yes, so yes I do and I, I do more because I am boozy it took me 42 years to accept that I am yes. boozy I love a glass of wine I love mm-hmm. a cocktail I will drink tequila mm-hmm. straight I love to have that kind of little treat at the end of the day or on the, the weekend. little treat. Yes. And Absolutely. I, and I know that there are many people out there who enjoy the same. And, you know, one of the things that we all missed in the pet industry during the pandemic was those conferences and conventions and, and industry events where we got to have happy hour after and, yeah. and chit chat with your people. Right. And so that's Absolutely. what I'm trying to recreate on my show. And what's cool about you know, virtual happy hour is that I can meet with anybody anywhere in the world. So long as we coordinate the time mm-hmm. and don't mess that up because, you know, time differences, but otherwise like we can talk to, I can talk to anybody. I've had guests from England and Australia Absolutely. and Australia, it was the next day. So she was having a, you know, I know, a, isn't a that mimosa. wild? Right, yeah, she exactly. was having a mimosa and I was having a martini, but you know, like it was, it was perfect. We, we managed to work it out. We do. Exactly. <laughs> we do. It's all for a good cause. Exactly. And I, you know, I just uh, thank you again for your time, for your enthusiasm, for your heart, for your openness to living an intuitive life. And I want to um, offer a little opportunity to our listeners. When you, when you head over to covered in pet hair.com and you start browsing rather than feeling overwhelmed by all of the different episodes and the different topics, why not let your intuition choose? Ooh. Just notice what title jumps out at you first and just start there yes. and just see where it leads. And it could be that it is in that episode. And you can even try this if you're wrestling with a specific issue or a pet problem or something that's got you really stressed out or worried or scared, set an intention this is very similar to how I even teach animal communication, just set an intention that, you know, instead of a a hard copy book, treat these episodes like a virtual book and just imagine that you will pick out the right episode, commit to listening to the whole thing straight through if possible. And just trust that what some tidbit that you're searching for, that's going to either resolve the issue or get you to the next leg of your journey you'll find it there just like opening a book to any page and your and and the information you're looking for is right there so just just do it that way it can be really daunting i know the podcast industry itself is overwhelming yes. just the sheer number of episodes you know we're both in our third and fourth season so mm-hmm. here we are we've got this bank of episodes and it can be really overwhelming don't let it don't yes. let, don't let, don't let it be, let your intuition lead and it will cut out all the white noise and help you zone in on the diamond yes. that you're looking for. If that yes, wasn't and just my, too cheesy for words, but I had no, to do and it. My, and my YouTube channel, I'll have over 400 videos, but I also right. have a playlist. So if you only have a cat, look at the cat playlist. If you only want to learn about dogs, oh, go brilliant. to the, the dog playlist. So that'll kind of help break it down a little bit. YouTube allows me to kind of make it so that it's yep. more user-friendly. And yes, on the podcasting platforms, I mean, you're going to start with the most recent it's, episode. Yes. So it may not speak to you. Like you said, it might not be the right so one. So don't, you. right. So, but, but the thing is, is if you just let yourself scroll, let your eyes go soft and just notice yes. when you open your eyes and you focus what is in front of you. It's just when we, be, when we commit to living an intuitive life, everything offers us an opportunity for adventure. Yes. I love where that. is my intuition going to lead me today? Yeah. I so appreciate your energy and your sense of wonder, because I think we all need to be reminded that there's more to it than just the day to day in and out of responsibilities. So I, I appreciate all we? the reminders. 
Yes. But you remind us and that's so important. We need somebody to kind of say, to nudge us back to ourselves. The wonder, the Mm -hmm. joy, the wonder, and the the, just the little, we string these little moments of joy together. So many of us have experienced so much loss, Mm -hmm. so much pain, so much distress, so much stress. And I'm no exception. And so I found that we just, we don't get it back in, in some kind of big right. grand finale. It's these little tiny moments of joy that right. we string together and we look back and we say, oh yeah, that kind of sucked, but oh, that was wonderful. Oh yeah, maybe that sucked a little. Okay, but that was just wonderful. And then we just choose where to place our focus. Agreed, so, agreed. Yes. So our dear listeners and viewers, thank you as always always for sharing a little bit of your precious time and energy with us. You can find us over at animallovelanguages.com backslash podcast. You can also head over to YouTube, Shannon Cuts. Uh, We've got a collection of animal communication talks where you can watch the video versions. I highly encourage you to watch the video version of this one because Isabel, you have the most fascinating backdrop you got so much in addition to you, beautiful you. We've got such a fascinating backdrop, probably loads of stories in there. And you get to meet Miss Petal, of course, who is yes. uh, new to our family. And, you know, if you have a question, if you have a story to share, if you have a guest feature request, somebody that you'd like to hear from that I have not spoken with yet if you just like to say hi and of course please do us the honor of liking subscribing sharing because it's what keeps us going in our little corner of the podcast universe the rapidly expanding podcast universe (laughs) yes so covered in pet hair gets you to isabel and her wonderful group of fellow pet lovers and experts and of course animallovelanguages.com connects you to me petal multi io and flash gordon and we're always connected heart to heart so look forward to welcoming you welcoming you back in a couple of weeks for a fresh new episode all our love and bye for now bye thank you bye